Miss Jamaica. How you doing, my dear sister? Bless you. Sister Jackson, can I see you see you for a minute? I saw you earlier. You had your picture up there. Uh, just wanted to say hello to you, Sister Jackson. Uh, I know you know you know you're there. Not sure if you. Uh, I'm gonna try to unmute you here and. Okay. So the Jackson, can you hear me? So the Jackson. Say hello to everybody. <laughs> Amen. We'll catch her. We'll catch her later. Uh, let us go before the Lord in prayer as we begin our uh, Tuesday evening, Tuesday evening Bible study. If you can hear me loud and clear, shoot me a thumbs up. If it's not uh, loud enough, uh, let us know. We'll make some adjustments. I think we are loud enough. Everybody's good. Amen. Amen. So we're going to begin our uh, our Tuesday evening Bible study as we continue to study the book of the book of Acts and um, and learn more about some of our great bi biblical history, some of the great apostles uh, in in uh, in Scripture. Uh, let us pray. Father, we thank you this evening for this, as well as many other opportunities you allow us to come together uh, to study your word and to glean from your word and grab a hold of practical applications for your word that, that we can apply to our lives right now. We pray your blessings over everyone uh, on this channel. We pray over the entire body of Christ. We pray, Lord God, that you would speak to our hearts this evening. You'd help us to rightly divide your word. We pray, Lord God, that the scales will literally fall from our eyes so that we can begin to see life and as you see life. And so we can begin to live in a, a way that is pleasing in your sight. We thank you and we praise you. And we give you the honor, glory, and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Um, Last last week we uh, looked at a, a very powerful section, uh, the first part of of, of chapter five, uh, the story of Ananias and Sapphira. And I I wonder if uh, one or two of you can uh, tell me what did what did Ananias and Sapphira do that uh, created some tremendous uh, a tremendous problem for them? What did they do that that really uh, really upset the Lord. Anyone, anyone just just unmute yourself and speak up. I, I, uh, uh, speak up if you can. Well, they sold, yeah, they sold some, they sold some uh, property and they were supposed to give the proceeds, all of the proceeds um, to the Lord and they held back on some of it. Yeah. And which they were not supposed to, from what I understand. Yeah. And uh, they were chastised for it. And as a result, uh, uh, Ananias lost his life. Yes, sir. Was, was there another one included in that? His wife. Yeah, they, 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 they tag team on the Lord. Yeah. Um, and uh, agreed to agreed to tell the same story. <laughs> uh, they were treated uh, they were treated the same, and we we see in scripture here that the that the judgment of the Lord uh, fell upon them from uh, from lying to the lying to the Holy Spirit of God, which. Uh, which we we concluded in our uh, in our reading is that the uh, is that the 
the work of God is uh, is a serious work, and that we must you know we must govern ourselves accordingly when we are when we are engaged in the in the in the mighty in the mighty works of God. Anyone else have any other comments on uh, on last week's uh, lesson and in terms of what you may have gleaned from it? Anyone else? Last week's lesson, what you may have gleaned from it, just uh, speak up if you can. To not be greedy. Anyone else? Okay, uh, Jared, your comments were to not what? To not be greedy. To not be greedy. Okay, how how were they greedy? Like the money that the Lord blessed them with, they they weren't giving it back the amount that they should have, and they lied about it. So to keep the money, so they were being greedy. Okay, very good. Any anything else? Anything else? Okay, we're gonna uh, we're gonna jump we're gonna jump straight in the scriptures again. It's a uh, uh, it's a lot to cover this evening. Not certain if we will make it if we will make it through the entire the entire chapter. Again, this is a, a fairly this is a fairly long long chapter here. Uh, but we are uh, we're gonna look at. Uh, we're going to begin right at verse 17. We're going to begin right at verse 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 17, and uh, and today we're going to look at um, an area of of, of persecution, and uh, and you know there there continue continue to be a a, a tremendous amount of uh, persecution in the uh, in the church, uh, even even this very day over the over the house of God and the and the and, and the uh, and the family of God, tremendous amount of uh, there are parts of our uh, world today where you really can't sit up and have a Bible study like what we're having right now, or you can't just go out on the street corner and share your faith uh, with others. So good to see you, Sister Jackson. Uh, yeah, again, there, there are parts of our society uh, in, in parts of this country where you just can't, you just can't show your, share your faith. But, uh, but we're, we're pleased that we do uh, live in a society today where, where, we are, where we are able to exercise our faith and share, share, share our faith with others. Uh, again, we, we are uh, reading directly from, from uh, Acts chapter 5, beginning at verse 17. If you have your Bibles and would like to uh, join along with us, at, right at Acts chapter 5, verse, uh, begin at verse 17. The scripture says, then the high priest and all his associates who were members of the party of the uh, Sadducees were filled with jealousy. Now, why do you think they were jealous? Why do you think they were jealous? Jared, help us out. Why do you think they were jealous? What did the apostles do to, to make others jealous? They're giving out blessings. They're, they're blessing people. They were healing People were being healed. People were being delivered. People were uh, uh, coming to the saving knowledge of the truth, and so people were divorcing their ways of life that represented that the Sanhedrin's represented uh, some of some some of their ways that were anti-God that did not support did not support Christ. They were abandoning this, and so the the popularity of these uh, apostles uh, began to increase in numbers, began to increase in numbers. So some jealousy uh, came over the uh, Sadducees because again, these Sadducees, they were, uh, they were religious people. You know, 
one thing that I don't, I, I, I resent being called a religious man, you know. So I, you can call me a man of faith, uh, a believer, but I don't like to be called religious because when you're being, when you're, when you're called religious, you kind of get lumped in with everybody. You get lumped in with the occult. You get lumped in with the, uh, the new age movement. You get lumped in. But I like to be called a person of faith or, or a or a believer. But when folks say, oh, I understand you're religious. You know, I'm like, no, 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 I'm not religious. I'm a man of faith. I'm a, I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. That's what I am. But I'm not religious. I'm not, I don't want to be called religious. You know, you know, re religiously, we get up and we brush our teeth in the morning. Religious, re the, just the term religious, it's, it's a practice. Uh, so I want to be called something a little, um, you know, something a little much, much more significant than just a religious, re religious man. So, so the Sanhedrins or, or, or the, uh, or, or the Sadducees, I should say, they were a, a religious sect. And so, uh, but what the apostles were teaching and preaching far exceeded that of being religious because what they were teaching and preaching resulted in signs and wonders and that created some problems. Look at the next verse. So they, they, they arrested the apostles and put them in the public jail. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opens the, opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. Now, throughout uh, scripture, uh, we see God, um, sometimes either, either Jesus shows up or the, uh, the Holy Spirit shows up in an invisible form, but also in cases, the angels show up. Uh, the, the, the scripture warns us about, you know, about being careful how we govern ourselves and how we treat individuals because the scripture says sometimes we may very well just be entertaining an angel and angels have a responsibility and angels get assignments. Oftentimes they come, they, they uh, bring forth messages. Sometimes they come and they relieve you of a, of a situation or, or a circumstance. But I want you to know that angels is not just a biblical, uh, something that occurred during the Bible ages, so to speak. But angels are active. Angels are active now in our society. Angels are active now in our society. And uh, so, so often uh, they do things and uh, we may take it for granted or, 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 or blow it off as a lucky, thing or, uh, uh, or, or, or something, some kind of coincident thing, but oftentimes it's the angel of God at work. The Bible assigns angels to us. Angels are around us to protect us, to keep us encouraged, and to guide, assist in guiding and directing. Here in this case, God releases an angel. When God uses angels throughout scripture, the assignment is, uh, is an assignment that a natural person is not capable of doing. A natural person is not capable of doing. If you're in a jail and you got guards and you got uh, all type of systems in place where individuals cannot penetrate and get in there and get you out, uh, then a man can't go in there. But God can send an angel who can pretty much just walk through rooms and not be seen and and um, be disguised as a as a, a correction correction officer and go in with the keys, open the gate, and escort them out of the building. Uh, so God uses angels in a creative ways. So. The scripture said, but during the night, an angel of the Lord opens the door of the jail and brought them out. You have to say, well, what happened to the jailers? Where were the jailers? Uh, 
Why is it that it appeared as if they were not even not even seen? And the and the jail is pretty much opens the gate, the door gets open, and the apostles walk right out of the jail. What a miracle! What a miracle! And you know this is why we often say that that our God will make a way out of what out of no way. Our God will make a way where there seem to be no way. So someone locked in prison, someone locked in prison is like the only way you're going to get out of here is that they're going to have to announce that you are innocent in order for you to get out. Other than that, you're going to stay locked up in that, in that jail. So, so they get released and, and notice what the angel uh, tell them. The angel tells them, go stand in the temple courts and tell the people the full message of the new life. The full message of the new life. Now, what is the role of an angel? Role of an angel, first of all, we know an angel is a messenger. We know an angel is sent from God. We know angels are designed to do the bidding of God. So this angel had several assignments. One assignment he had, he had to penetrate the jail system in order to, in order to rescue these apostles. The, the second assignment this angel had is that this angel had to get the attention of the apostles and release and get them out of that jail. And the third is that we see the angel had a message to get to the apostles. And again, what was that message? That message was to tell them what? To go stand at the temple courts and to tell the people what? He told them, I want you to tell the, I want you to tell the people the full message of the new life. What is that full message? Uh, what's, the, what's the full message of the new life? I just want to hear from someone. What's the full message of the new life? The full message of the new life is to what? Anyone want to chime in? Full message of the new life is to what? The, the, the full message of the... Uh, of, of the of the new life is to let the world know that Jesus saved, that Jesus saved, and that that the only way that we are able to reach heavens, reach heaven, is to be saved by Jesus Christ. So they were told to to share uh, with others the full message of the new life and, and their new life in Christ. See, when you gave your life to Jesus Christ, you took on, from a spiritual standpoint, you took on a spiritually new life. Uh, there's a new life. You've been spiritually, you've been born again. You have a new life, and that new life is in Christ, that new life is in Christ. So the scripture continues to read, it says, at daybreak, at daybreak, they entered the temple courts as they had been told and began to teach the people, began to teach the people. Again, these were uh, new converts. Some of them were new converts. And they had to be taught. Uh, they had to be taught this new life in Christ. You know, I remember when I first uh, became a Christian, uh, didn't really know how to pray. Uh, clearly didn't understand the, understand the scriptures. And so I had to be taught. You know, what I know right now, someone taught it to me. And this is why Christians today uh, are going around. If you're if you're if you're not taught, 
you can easily be led astray. You can easily be led astray. That's why we need to be taught the word of God. The Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Study, study to show ourselves approved unto God. That's what the that's that's what the Holy Scripture tells us. That we have to that we have to, you know, we have to study uh, this word. And, and the more we study this word, the more we are able to grow, the more we're able to develop, the more we're able to, to be like Jesus wants us to be when we study the word of God. So so the the the, the apostles uh, begin, the scripture says, begin to teach the people. Now notice the next verse. When the high priest and the associates arrived, they called together the Sanhedrin. These were the religious court system. The full assembly of the elders of Israel and sent them to jail that, and sent to the jail for the apostles. Now check this out. But on arriving at the jail, the officer did not find them there. So they went back and reported, we found the jail securely locked with a guard standing at the door. But when he opened them, opened them we found no one inside. On hearing this report, the captain of the temple guard and the chief priest were puzzled, wondering what would come of this. What they experienced right there was a supernatural miracle of God. Uh, perhaps there was one way in and one way out. And it, it, it you know, the scripture says they were, they, they were puzzled and uh and wondering what could come of this what is this all about you see god's been doing supernatural things from the beginning it is nothing for god to do something supernatural for you supernatural uh supernatural for me you know there was a there there was one year in my life that i'll never ever forget uh, and I often tell folks that, you know, the favor of God was so strong on my life that everywhere I went, it was like I was being blessed. I would show up at events and they would say, uh, take a ticket. My number would get called. <laughs> uh, I, I never forget that, that same that that same period of time I was at this big conference and there was this gold, this, this gold plated putter that the golfers were just drooling over it. And uh, I mean, just drooling over, like they wanted that golf plated, that golf plated putter. And so I grabbed a ticket like everybody else, but I was walking around kind of doing my own thing. And so they kept calling my name, calling my name. And I forgot, I, had, I forgot I even gotten a ticket on it. And then someone saw me and they said, they've been calling your name. Uh, you're the winner of this golf, gold-plated golf putter. And of course, you know, I've never been a golfer before. I got, you know, got some nice clubs in the garage, but they got, they got spider webs on them because I, I think I've had them out there on the golf course. Um, you know, a couple of a couple of times, and uh, and hadn't been really out there since. Every time I'm out there on the golf course, that they make fun of me that my ball is going to the left and to the right instead of uh, straight ahead. So, uh, but so I bring back home this golf uh, putter, and my brother, uh, who is an Advent golfer gets his eyes on it and uh, he said, man, I'll pay you anything for this, 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 this putter. And I says, I said, brother, you can have it, you can have it, you can have it. But anyway, 
when, uh, when, when, when the favor of God is on your life, you just see constantly seeing supernatural things. You just constantly seeing God do great things in our life. And I would like to encourage each one of you to look for the supernatural works of God every day of your life. Because if God doesn't sleep, if God doesn't slumber, then he's always up to doing something supernatural. Because God loves to get the honor and the glory. He loves to get the praise. So, you know, it, it's nothing for God to do for you what he did for uh, this apostle. And, and it's, it's nothing for God to, to see your enemies uh, uh, wavering, your enemies uh, wondering, your enemies being puzzled and asking questions, how did this happen? How did this happen? Remember what the scripture says, that, that, that God would do for, that God loves to do, just say you're asking God, say God, save my son, save my daughter. And the Lord shows up and God, he just, he saves the whole household because God enjoyed doing things that blows everybody's mind, that causes people to wonder, that causes individuals to be puzzle, puzzle, puzzle. And so I say to the Lord tonight, let me wonder, uh, let me be puzzled about how you operate because when God does something, he does it uh, uh, in a great way. Look at verse 29 again for those of you just, just tuning in with us this evening. We're at Acts chapter, Acts chapter 5. We're, we're now approaching uh, verse 20, verse 25. Uh, we are, uh, we're we're uh, looking at the the uh, the uh, apostles uh, being 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 persecuted uh, by the uh, by the Sanhedrin. Uh, notice in uh, verse twenty five again they they're wondering and they're trying to figure out well we locked them away we locked them away and we put a guard here to ensure that they never get out and now they're out. Look at verse twenty three verse. 25, I should say. Then someone came and said, look, the men you put in jail are standing in the temple courts teaching the people. At that time, the captain went with his officers and brought the, and brought the apostles they did not use force because they feared that the people would stone them. So they they uh, they, they 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 grabbed the apostles and uh, or, 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 or took the apostles, and they they handled them very carefully because the the movement that God was doing through the ministry of the apostles was so great and had become so popular that they were that they were very careful as to how they handled them. Look at verse 27. Having brought the apostles, they made them appear before the Sanhedrin, so that's the court, that's the, the leaders that would be judging, to be questioned by the high priest. And notice what the high priest said. We gave you strict orders not to teach in the name. Again, we gave you strict orders not to teach in this name. You see, even back then they were struggling. They had issues with the name Jesus. The Bible clearly tells us when we mention the name Jesus that demons just tremble, tremble, tremble. They tremble when you hear the name when you hear the name Jesus, you know, it's, it's, it's still biblical right now that if you get yourself in a situation and you have nothing else to, to, to no one else to call on, I want to encourage you, you call on the name Jesus. Can someone say amen? Can someone say amen? Now notice this here. 
when God yeah. sent the angel, when God sent the angel to get the apostles out of jail, the angel told them, again, an angel, a messenger from God, this is what God told the angel to tell them. God told the angel to tell them again, right, right at verse 20, the latter part of verse 20, he says, tell the people, go, tell the people the full message of the new life. So God told them to tell the people the message of the new life. The Sanhedrin's told them to stop the teaching. Now, who do you think? These blood bought, spirit filled, Holy Ghost sent apostles would listen to. Who do you think they were going to listen to? Obviously, they listened to Jesus, the message that Jesus sent to them. So, again, in verse 28, we gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, he said. Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teachings and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. A quick question, quick question for those of you that are listening in with us that the latter part of that scripture where it says this man's blood. Who do you think they were talking to about? Who is that? Who is that this man? Quick question, quick question. Quick question. Who is that this man? Say, say it one more time. Jesus blood. <laughs> Jesus. No? That's right. right. Jesus blood. That's what that's what they're talking about. That the that the more they mm -hmm. the, the more they preach, the more they preach about Jesus and Jesus being crucified and Jesus blood being sufficient to meet all the, the they say the more they open up their mouth, they begin to feel guilty and 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 and, and convicted that and, and, the, and the word of God, people of God, should always have that effect that uh, we call it being under conviction. When you, hear the, when you hear the word of God, under conviction. And so they didn't want to feel under conviction. Look at verse 29. Peter and the other apostles replied. Now, they had a choice. They told them to stop teaching about Jesus Christ. The angel told them, you're being released from prison so that you can go and talk about this new life in Jesus Christ. Notice what Peter uh, says. Peter and the other apostles reply, we must obey God rather than men. The God of our Father raised Jesus from the dead, whom you killed by nailing him and hanging him on a tree. God exalted him to his own right hand as prince and savior, that he might give repentance and forgiveness of sin to Israel. Now notice this, they have, they've grabbed them. Uh, they're about to uh, uh, put them back in, 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 in prison again. But why that process is taking on, taking place, Peter gives them another sermon. And then he says, we, the apostles, we are witnesses of these things, meaning, we were, we were there when you killed him. We were, we were there when he raised from the grave. We are witnesses of these things. We're witnesses of these things. And so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who 
obey him. And this is where their power came from. This is where their power came from. You know, uh, Christians today need more power than ever before. I, I, I truly believe that with all of our heart, that in order for us to be bold like these apostles, we need, we need boldness power. We need boldness power. You know, before I became a Christian, Many came to me and told me uh, that I was, well, we call it uh, an introvert or someone that is very quiet. But I must, <laughs> but, I, but I must tell you now, um, not too many people will call me an introvert. <laughs> but but I, I must say uh, the more confident that I became in my, in my Christian faith, okay, the more confident I became as a man and as, a, and as an individual. And it's because of the boldness that, that the Holy Spirit has, has placed in me to be bold and to speak up about what's, uh, what's not right and uh, so on and so forth. But but so so Peter now all of the the other apostles were there because the scripture uh, says it was the apostles and Peter and the other apostles so uh, so but but Peter is known for the being the spokesperson for the apostles that in all in in in, in many settings some that we've already read some that we will read we'll find him being the most outspoken one. So clearly, uh, Peter was that, uh, that extrovert in the crowd. Look at verse 33. When they heard this, they were furious and wanted to put them to death. I mean, the, 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 the uh, conviction <laughs> what, what was so great is like, we don't want to hear the name of Jesus. Don't mention that name ever again. But so you have the uh, you have these two different set groups. You have the the uh, the Sadducees and and you have the Pharisees and 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 and, and one was uh, kind of liberal and one was uh, kind of uh, conservative. You know. Uh, and uh, and so they were ne not necessarily on the on, on on the on the same on the same page, uh, you know. Uh, a, a good way to uh, uh, somewhat uh, remember what these two sect groups, and I'm only mentioning it because they're the one that uh, they had issues with the with the apostle teachings. The the, the Pharisees. A good way to remember uh, the Pharisees is that. Uh, is that they were uh, they, they they were they they set out to be fair, so they say you know they think they were fair. You see, Pharisee, they think they were fair. You see, and the uh, the, the, the the Sadducees were the real conservative group and everything, and they went around and when they uh, they they uh, were fasting and things like that, they were let people know with their shame faces. So when you deal with Sadducees, they thought they were sad. You see? Okay, never forget that. Never forget that. So, you know, that's why, that's why it's good to be in Bible study. You can learn some things that you never, ever, ever, ever forget. Anyway, but the Pharisees name, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, Gamal, Gamal, a teacher of the law who was honored by all the people stood up in the Sanhedrin and ordered that the men be put outside for a little while. So he told, he basically said, you know, for the apostles to kind of step out so he can have a conver he, he can have a conversation. Now, just a little bit about Gamal. Uh, G G G Gamal was one of the uh, one of the teachers of the law. 
many Jews sat up under his teachings. Uh, the, uh, the Apostle Paul, uh, if you read the Apostle Paul writings, Apostle Paul make reference to his teachings under Gamal, the, the teacher of the law. Uh, so they, they were ordered to step out. Then, uh, uh, then he addressed them and he says, men of Israel, consider carefully what you intend to do to these men. Some time ago, Thaddeus appeared claiming to be somebody and about 400 men railed to, rallied to him and he was killed, all his followers were dispersed and, and it all came to nothing. I mean, it, it accomplished anything. After him, Judas the Galilean appeared in that days, in the days of this census and led a band of people in revolt. He too was killed and all his followers were scattered. Therefore, in, in the present case, this, this is Gamal, he's, he's making an argument here. He said, therefore, in the present case, I advise you, again, Gamal was a respectful man. He, 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 he was doing most of the teachings then. He says, leave these men alone. Let them go. For, for, for if their purpose or activity is of a of a of, of human origin, it will fail. I mean, some great teachings here. There's some great teachings uh, that Gamel is saying. He said, if it's if it's generated just for uh, uh, their own human gratification. Say it ain't going nowhere. It's not going nowhere. It's not going nowhere. But if it is from God, what what what's some good teaching? If it's from God, you will not be able to stop these men. You know, one of the worst things that we can do, you know, is go against somebody who's on God's side. You know, you're gonna get your butt whipped. I can't break it down no better than this. <laughs> if you're going against somebody that's on God's side, the minute you learn that you're going against somebody, you you jump on their side and just you know in the fight, in the fight right there. So this is what Gamel, uh, he was not not a not a follower of the apostles or whatever, but he gives them this these this great teaching. That if what they're doing is for human gain and human human glory, is going to die. But if they're doing it for God, if they're doing it for God, it's going to last. And, 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 but he says, but if it is from God, you will not be able to stop these men. Meaning give up. Give up. Give up. You will not be able to stop these men. You will not be able to stop these men. You will only find yourself fighting against God. You remember what, what Jesus told the apostle Paul before he became a apostle, before he became a, a, uh, a, a follower and a work of Jesus Christ on the road of Damascus. Anyone remember what Jesus told uh, Saul at that time? He told him, it's hard to kick against the prick. <laughs> you can't beat me, you know. You can't, you can't beat me. If, 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 if you saw a prick, I wish I uh, uh, had a chance to pull it up, but it's like, it's like a, a, a sharp object. Can you imagine kicking against a sharp object? It would hurt you. It hurt you every single time. It hurt you every single time. So, so Gamal tells him this, and, and, and look at verse 4. Look at verse 4 as we, we kind of wrap, wrap up this evening. His speech persuaded them. 
<laughs> That's right. His, 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 his speech convinced them. They called the apostles in and had them fall. You know, they, 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 they beat on them a little bit. Then they ordered them not to speak. Again, you think they would learn by now not to speak in the name of Jesus, and they let them go. N nowhere do we see here that the apostles agreed with that, but they let them, they let them go. The, the apostle left the Sanhedrin's rejoicing because they have been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the, for the name. Day after day in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stop teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Christ. <laughs> now, you know, in our modern day time, you know, we get a little bit of heat and we're like, uh, I don't want to do that no more. And we want to give up. You know, I don't want to do that no more. We want to want to give up. But a lesson that we can learn from from these apostles that in the midst of trying times and in the midst, midst of difficult times, they continue to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Even when it appeared as if uh, things weren't working for them. And, and, you know, so often in our faith, when things aren't coming together as we think they should come together, we quickly want to throw in the towel and say, you know, it's not working. But I want to encourage you, you continue to hold on to God's unchanging hand. You continue to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Wherever you go, the word of God says to always be ready to give an account of the hope that is within you. Always, people of God, be ready to give an account. If, if, if you're afraid to share your faith, I want to encourage you, you begin to pray to God, asking God, God, give me boldness. Give me boldness that I can share the love of Jesus Christ with everyone. Share the love of Jesus Christ with everyone. You know, uh, when my son, we would drop my son off to school every day. And, uh, and I have uh, one final message that I would tell him uh, when I, I would pray with him. And I would tell him, well, actually, uh, not just him, but my daughter as well, which both of them were on the line. So I can see which one of them remember, although it's only been like four or five months since we dropped you off the school. But Jared, after we would pray, what would I tell you as you got out of the car to head to, into your class? Tell somebody about Jesus. Tell somebody about Jesus. People of God, that's why we're here. That's why we're still here, that we are God's messenger. You see, that's why when it was time to get these apostles out of prison, God used an angel. One thing that you can learn about angels, they are going to do exactly what they've been sent to do. We need to volunteer and say, here am I, here am I, here am I, Lord, use me. Use my voice. Because little do we know the message of salvation, it still transforms, it still changes heart. The message, the message of salvation, the message that Jesus saved, it still works miracles. When don't ever under, underestimate when a person gets saved, the Bible says that 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 just by you sharing your faith and a person getting saved. You have saved a multitude of sins. Don't ever underestimate when a person gets saved, it is the greatest miracle that you, you can ever witness. It is the only miracle in scripture that the angels in heaven rejoice when a soul is saved. 
if, if we begin to view miracles like God view miracles, we'll be shouting all day, all night long. Can someone say hallelujah this evening? Can someone give God the honor, the glory, and the praise this evening? He's worthy of it. The scripture says he inhabited the praises of his people. So now we see, we, we've looked at the, uh, the, the earlier part of chapter five with Ananias and Sapphira as God began to, uh, to grow and develop his church and provide resources uh, to the church. And, and, and now we see how faithful the apostles were. You know, many people, you know, you get thrown in, in jail because of preaching the gospel and you get let out. Then you're like, well, you know, I'm not going to do that anymore. But they, they stay consistent. They stay consistent. So a word of encouragement to each one of us, let's remain consistent in spreading the good news of Jesus Christ. Jesus save. Amen. Amen. Before we close out in prayer, if you have not recorded yourself with a 30-second, your favorite Bible verse, we want you to uh, do that this evening and send it to us because we're going to uh, be sending out our, uh, our uh, second, second round of Bible verses as we are on a campaign to have 100 My Favorite Scripture uh, 100 individuals. Our goal is we want 100 individuals by the end of the month. Can you imagine sitting down and listening to 100 favorite Bible verses? It will only, it will only encourage you. So we got this movement that have gone viral and I am asking each one of you, if you can help me, maybe you can call five or 10 individuals and say, Video yourself with a 30 second, just say my favorite Bible verse is, and read that Bible verse and, and uh, send, that, send that video clip into us. We want to hit 100 by the end of this month. Again, we have dedicated this month to the word, to the word, to, to looking inside, looking inside of the word. And this coming Sunday, I'm going to be talking about uh, biblical meditation. Biblical meditation. Don't want you to miss it. Biblical meditation. The, the scripture tells us to meditate on the word of God. How often, people of God? Can someone tell me how often should we meditate on the word of God? I can't hear you. Yeah, I can't hear you. How often should we meditate on the Word of God? Daily. Daily. Very good. It is is day and night. Day and night. So this Sunday, I'm going to teach you, and it's 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 it, 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 it's something actually that we've all been doing, but we've been doing it incorrectly and it's been doing more damage to us than harm. So I want you to tune in this Sunday at 11 as we look at meditating, meditating on the word, of, meditating on the word of God as we look at, at Joshua uh, chapter one, verses one through one through nine. That's our kind of our theme a theme passage of scripture that we're utilizing uh, this month as we focus our attention on the on, on the word of God. The word of God is should be our friend. You know, it should not be something that we want to avoid. It should not be something that we make fun of. But this is a word of God. You know, it would have done my heart so uh, uh, so good when the president did this number on television, it would have meant so much to me if I knew that he truly, truly, truly was looking to God to guide and direct the people during this time of, of uh, this pandemic season 
that uh, that that we're that we're in. So again, trust you would join with me and help help us that by the end of this month, uh, we want to make sure we have that 100 Bible verses. And I am looking forward to being able to sit down and hear the reading of 100 Bible verses. I guarantee you when I walk away from the TV screen after hearing 100 Bible verses, I'm not going to be the same again. Because the Bible says, how do we get faith? Faith cometh by what? Hearing, Hearing. the word of God. <laughs> so little do many know uh, that's going to sit down and, and watch this video clip hearing 100 Bible verses. Little do they know that they're going to walk away stronger in their faith than they've ever been before. So I hope, uh, you know, two or three of you would say, Pastor, I'm going to get you 10, I'm going to get you 10 individuals with 10 uh, uh, video clips of my favorite Bible, my favorite Bible verse. Uh, uh, Brother Bobby, I put, I sent it out there to our family, sent it out there to our family on Facebook, asking them to join us in this, uh, this month long effort of my favorite Bible bird. Again, it only takes you 30 seconds. You get on your phone and video yourself uh, for 30 seconds and, uh, and, and send it on to us. And we add it in with the, with, the, with the rest of them. If you haven't had a chance to look at it, check out our Sunday service and you'll see it right there online. We're gonna close with a word of prayer. Again, so good, so good to see Sister uh, Mandara Young uh, uh, here with us this evening, and uh, Sister Sandra, and and uh, my dear wife, and my child, my uh, my children, and Sister Jackson. God bless you. Can you put your hands in the air, Amen? <laughs> Can you put your hands in the air. God bless you. God bless you so much, uh, Sister Jackson. Good to good to see you here joining joining with us and good to good to hear that you're doing uh that you're doing much better. Again, we want to be encouraged. We want to pray, pray one for another, as the scripture says. Pray one for another. And so we're going to close out in prayer, praying for our entire church family. Our prayer is that no one would uh go astray, no one would be left behind, that we all will keep the faith, that we all will stay in encouraged. And we are, we're trying to roll out a lot of different creative things, people of God, just to keep us doing spiritual things and, and encouraging one another. That's what the whole My Favorite Verse is all about. Uh, the video clips we do for Father's Day and Mother's Day. And, you know, we do all that so we can stay connected and uh, allow the Lord to continue to use us as we encourage one another. Again, we want to pray for those who... Be, We'll be, we'll be traveling. We want to pray for those who are in the hospital. We want to uh, pray for those who, who lost, a, uh, lost loved ones. We want to, want, to, want to pray for those who are down and discouraged and, and out of work and, and financially challenged, spiritually challenged, emotionally and, and, fit, and psychologically challenged. We want to pray for them this evening. We want to pray for them this evening. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you so much for being a mighty and being an awesome God. You're worthy of all of our praise. Lord God, we pray uh, this evening that you would touch everyone on this line. You would touch everyone, Lord God, that will receive a, a copy of this, this video, Lord God. And Lord God, we pray for our, my favorite uh, Bible verse, project we pray lord god that as it go across uh, this country across this world lord god we pray that many lord god will be encouraged in the hearing of your word lord god we pray your uh, your healing power over the sick lord god we pray lord god that someone's on their deathbed lord god that the doctors have counted out we speak healing right now wherever they are lord god in hospitals all across this world, we speak healing in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We, we, we pray over our entire church family, Lord God, 
We pray that you would show them favor, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that you would provide and meet their needs, Lord God. Lord God, we pray for anyone, Lord God, who we have not thought of, Lord God, that perhaps have, have uh, feel like they've been left out, Lord God. Bring their name to our remembrance so that we can do whatever is, is necessary to reach out to them. Lord God, guide and direct us. We pray healing, continues healing on the the Robertson, the, the, uh, the Robertson family, Lord God, healing on the Baker's family, Lord God. Lord God, we speak healing, Lord God, over the Gibson family. We pre speak healing, Lord God, now on the, on, the, on the young family, Lord God. We speak healing now, Lord God, um, um, Mother, Mother Jackson and, and her family, Lord God. And Lord God, we pray, Lord God, that all will go, be well. We pray, Lord God, that you would use this pandemic, use this time to draw us closer to you. We give you the honor, we give you the glory, we give you the praise, and we bless your name. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. In closing, I want to just share with you just a, a real quick, real quick, real quick testimony. Pass us through. I, uh, uh, was had an opportunity this weekend to to preach uh, a funeral uh, service, do a eulogy at a funeral service, and there were over 800, 800 people viewing this funeral service, and I had an opportunity to give a salvation message to eight hundred plus people that were viewing at least at that one particular. At that one particular time. And so, people of God, I give God the honor, the glory, and the praise. I didn't raise my hand and volunteer to do it. I was invited to come in at the last minute to help this family out. But we give God the honor, the glory, and the praise. God bless you all. Love you all. And let's give God the honor, the glory, and the praise. Can everyone shout amen? Hallelujah. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. God bless you all. Have a blessed evening. All right. Good night, Kel. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night, Sister Jackson. <laughs>